verses 13 to 24. And Luke in the 23rd chapter, verses 13 to 24. It says, And Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people, and said to them, You have brought this man unto me as one that perverteth the people. And behold, I have examined him before you and have found no fault in this man, touching those things whereof you accuse him. Not nor yet Herod, for I sent you to him, and lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto him. I will therefore chastise him and release him, for the necessity is he must release one unto them at the feast. And they cried out all at once, saying, Away with him, this man, and release him to us, Barabbas, who for a certain sedition made into the city and for murder, was cast into prison. Pilate, therefore, willing to release Jesus, spake again to them. But they cried, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. And he said to them the third time, Why, what evil hath he done? I have found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. And they were instant with, with loud voices, required that he might be crucified, and that the voice of them and that the chief priest prevailed. And Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required. Let us pray. Our precious and heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for another day that you've given to us. The, from a time of life, for the opportunities that you've given to us that we may witness to other people. That we can live life and other people can see you living within us. I pray that the, the, from the reading of the word this morning that you would continue to open our minds, Lord, and minister into our hearts, that you would give us and let us come to the understanding and be able to see the things that you would have us to see. We thank you, Lord, for your word, and we ask your blessings upon it today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. How many people today are familiar with the word almost? Do you realize that that word is used very often today in our society? And through even each and every one of us, we all use the word almost. Sometimes it's, it's in our speech, and a lot of times it's in our actions that we do each and every day. And I want you to consider that today, almost. How many times have you almost done something? How many times have you used the words almost in a sentence because you never really completed it, but you, you have almost did that? And that's what I want, to, I want us to think about today, almost within our lives. And probably, you could probably, many of us could say that they've met someone who was what would consider to be an almoster. That they seemed like everything that they did, they almost did it, but never really completed anything. If we look at scripture today, do you realize that Pilate almost did a lot of things? He attempted several times to be able to release Jesus. He almost did that. He almost released him. He almost banged the gavel and said he was free to go. He tried several different times to allow him to go. He almost did that. Have you, have you yourself ever almost done anything? Think about that now. Have you ever almost done anything in your life? You didn't really do it, but you almost did it. You had an opportunity to do something, you almost took it. You almost called someone. You almost went to the grocery store. Or you almost went hunting. We can all say, probably in our lives, we've all experienced that before, where we've almost done something. It seems that several, many people do that today. But you realize that that almost, that word almost, or the attempt to almost do something, we might as well have been a million miles away, shouldn't we? Because we didn't complete it. We didn't, all, we didn't actually do it. And I think today that many people use that word so much that they think that almost means that they really did do it. I almost did that What? To them, they use it so often that they think, well, they really did complete something because they're so used to saying almost. Many people are constantly playing a game of that, so to speak, of Russian roulette as Christians because they almost are. They almost did something for God. They almost did that. They almost read God's word. They almost 
accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Today, many people use that word so loosely. I know most did that. A poet once wrote, Of all the words of the tongue or pen, the saddest are these. It might have been. If that is true, then one of the most tragic words in human language must be the word, almost. So many people use it today. The word almost speaks of missed out opportunities, chances which you could have done, opportunities which you almost did but didn't do. And I'm sure that if it would be in history, you would see it almost many times in history. You hear people saying, I almost climbed that mountain. Have you ever wondered how you would almost climb a mountain? You can't, can you? How many people get excited when someone tells them they almost did something? You don't really get excited until you hear someone actually accomplish something, do you? But how many, do you ever get excited when someone says, I almost did that? Not too often, do you? Not too often you get excited or overwhelmed because someone almost said they accomplished that or did that. I almost reached that goal, or I almost closed the deal, so to speak, and many, many other things come to mind, or I almost got there in time. I mean, some people, that's constant. I almost got there in time. Many people seem to be running, run late. We've all had those almost experiences in our lives. We almost made it. We almost did that. I almost got the job complete that I was asked to do, or I, I tried to almost do that. Like I said, that almost is used all the time. And like I said, some people use that word so much that they feel like that almost means that they really did accomplish something. So often this word is used in our speech and our actions as Christians today. Have you ever met a Christian that's almost? And I ask you a question if you've almost got excited about someone who said that they almost did something, accomplished it. You don't really get excited. I almost went to the, I almost went to Hawaii. I almost won, won the lottery or whatever it may be. You don't get too excited about someone that almost does something. What about Christians today? What about us? This speaks to all of us. If we almost did what God called us to do, if we almost believed in what God tells us is going to be, how many people would get excited about that? You see, we cannot be people of almost, can we? We have to fulfill to be what God has called us to be in everything that we do. We can't almost read God's word. I almost had time this week to read God's word. Or I almost had time to call someone. Or oh, I just about picked up the phone and asked somebody how they were doing this week. That doesn't get accomplishments, does it? It doesn't get people's attention. It doesn't get people excited. It is those who complete. Who said, I did that. I have done that. I went, I finished what God has asked me to do. I didn't almost complete what God asked me to do. I didn't have to do what God called me to do, but I did it to the fulfillment of what God has placed me here to do. I did it completely. So many people do things almost. If we would look at a Christian that would I would consider to be an almost Christian, a Christian is a hard worker. He's not lazy, but working long and hard hours to earn enough good income to provide comfortable living for his or her family. To be recognized and praised by his superiors or his or her superiors. To be promoted up to the corporate ladder. This is a person who lives by the creed. God helps those who help themselves. Another thing we can say about the almost Christian is that they are good moral people. The almost Christian is someone who works hard at observing and adhering to a code of morality in which it is wrong to kill, commit adultery, or other sexual sins that the Bible talks about, or destroy one another with their words. They avoid, avoid immoral things such as drunkenness, drug use, and, and gambling, and other things like that. This is a person who is generally good to others and could, not, could quote you and try to live by their golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. If we would continue to look at the almost Christian. Well, they're generally religious people, so to speak. They are people who outwardly demonstrate a form of godliness outwardly. Every time the church doors are open, they are usually there. But if you take all these things in consideration, if you look at the reality after all of these things are said, do they truly know God as their Lord and Savior? 
Have they truly, have they all completed what got the fullness of God within their lives? Or are they almost being a Christian? All of these things are good. All these things are wonderful things, but the real, real reality is, do they know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? Do they know God's Word, or do, have they almost read it? Do they know from the, the stories and how they pertain to us each and every day? Do they dig deep into know what God is wanting for them and for their, their lives? Have they truly come to grasp the gospel and to grasp God as their Lord and Savior? Fulfilling and completing what God has called us to do is very, very important. Do you realize that all these things that were said this morning, but without God being in the background of all these things, we absolutely have nothing at all. We cannot almost do what God calls us to do. We cannot almost three quarters of the way be a Christian. We have to be and grasp it completely and to do it Completely. Like I said, if you have never got excited about someone who has almost done something, how can we as God's people get other people excited if we don't fully complete what God has called us to do? If we're only almost there, we did everything almost. But many times people forget the important part God. God is the reason we are called Christians. God is what transforms us and makes us different in our lives. And it is through the reading of God's word and fulfilling and doing the things that God has truly called us to do that we can be people that are completely acceptable of being called Christians. You know, many people will go down through history of all the good things they've done. Oh, they were a part of this organization or that organization. They went to church. They belonged to this church. They did all these things. They were always there to open and greet the doors and to meet other people. But did they truly know God as a personal Savior? And I think that's something for each of us to realize in our hearts. Do we truly accept and know God as our Lord and Savior? Oh, we can go through the motions. We can, we can wear the finest clothes. We can wear $500 suits. We can wear $500 dresses for ladies or whatever. But that doesn't make us any more complete, does it? It's not until we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior that we will become and it's completely with God. We cannot be people of almost. It can't be acceptable. It shouldn't be acceptable. We should, people, we should be people who want to grasp God to its fullness. To know God. Do you know that you can notice the difference between someone who is almost and someone who is fully committed to God? And it's kind of, I mentioned it before. When you go to the store and you read the ingredients on an object and you, you look at oatmeal, it usually says just oatmeal. But if you look at, look at something, that you get, pick up a drink, and it has a dictionary worth of words in there, things you can't even pronounce, is the real thing that, you, that, make, that is good for you. Even though the others taste good, is the real genuine thing that is good for our, for our bodies. The same it is with Christians. It is God. It should be the main ingredient in our walk. Each and every day. If people could read the ingredients of a Christian, the first thing should be up there would be God. And there would be things that would follow that would come along as God transforms us. But God is the main ingredient, should be the main ingredient in our lives. People who are truly people of God, there are things that separate, like it separates them from the real, genuine walk with God. I love that word, genuine. It means it's real. It's something that you can grasp and take. And I was trying to think of what I could compare to that would be real and not real. And I, I came to, uh, uh, food is so easy to compare to. Have you ever had real, real bacon bits and, and imitation bacon bits? They're not the same, are they? They don't taste the same, they don't end up the same. It's kind of like, my, on a, even though it's still corn, it's kind of like getting fresh corn out of your garden and someone trying to freeze a piece of corn and try, and try to call it corn in a cob. It's not the same. There's nothing. Something that is real and genuine. And that's what I want to experience as a, as a Christian. I want to experience God. I want to experience something real in my life. Something that's genuine. I don't want the fake imitation stuff. And I don't want to be people considered to me to be an almost person. Or an almost Christian. But I believe it's not until we fall in love with God that we will want the desire 
to be able to consider to want to know God as a personal Savior. And some of the things that I think we can find in that real genuine is the love for God. The love that you have, the compassion, the passion that you have seeking after God with all, with all your heart. Wanting to do all the things you can and not just letting things of this world stop you. But wanting to go the extra mile. Wanting to, to feel God within our lives. Wanting to feel that love that engulfs you. Have you ever had something overwhelm you before? Often, I believe that's what God's love does to us. It overwhelms us. It engulfs us. It fills every little crack and corner within our lives until there is no room for anything else. That God lives within us. Do you know being a Christian is, a, is an amazing thing? It's a blessing, a joy to be able just to be called a Christian. You know, there are people that work hard to say, well, I'm, I'm a member of this organization or that organization. Because, you know, because they think that it gives them some, uh, higher up in society. But today, you know, the world looks down on Christians today. Anybody realize that? It's amazing what, how the world looks at, at people who serve God. Everything that the world goes for goes against godly standards. But you know it is an honor to be able to say, call yourself a Christian and to tell other people that you're a Christian. You can consider yourself one of the select for the few. And honestly, you know, the, the Marine Corps and the Special Forces, they have the, you know, the best of the best or whatever. Which is, uh, I believe if you're called a Christian and you truly are serving God, you're the best of the best. This world would ever have to offer. But it's important that we continue to, to serve Him. You know, it's the love that God gives to us that transforms us. You know, it's when we... God enters into our life, we are transformed, aren't we? Things change. We, we feel it in our side. You, you look at the things differently. You get an energy. You just want to serve God and to do, serve other people with all your heart. And the things that you have to do at home, they don't become important anymore. But going to help someone else does interest in other people. This love for God causes them to wake up every morning and think, I desire more of God. If I want nothing else in life, I just want to desire God in my life. I'm glad I am a part of the family of God. And I just want more of God. It doesn't matter, seriously, when you fall in love with God and you want God in your heart. It doesn't matter. Sometimes it doesn't matter about your health. Sometimes it doesn't matter about other things in life. All you want to do is to serve God and to be a part of God. Another thing that drives the the life that a completely Christian person is genuine is the love for other people. When you find yourself giving of your heart to other people, when you find God's love working in you that you just want to give to someone else, it doesn't matter who they are, you just want to help them. You want to be able to almost be there for Have you ever had wanted to help someone before? They're opening up a package or they're working and you just want to step in and do it for them? You just, want to, you just want to be there and help them out. And you know if you do, you're going to be in the way, but you still you want to do it. Oftentimes, I believe this is God's love working in us as Christians. You just want to step in and be there for other people. But in many ways, you know you'd be in the way, but you still want to do it because you care for them. And you want to help. Often, God drives us to do these things. Unlike the almost Christian, the person that loves another person, not because of the things that they can obtain, but because they are just someone. Wasn't that important that someone likes you because you're just someone and not for something that you can give to them? What a wonderful feeling is when someone likes you or someone wants to love you back in whatever manner it may be as far as helping you or doing things in a Christian manner. They just want to do it because you are who you are, that you are a person of God or you're just a person in general. And it is because of God's love that's transformed that person that they want to just do for you. They're not expecting nothing else but to, to be able to love and to do the things they can for you because you are a breathing person that God has created in his image. This is the kind of love that compels us to lay aside concerns for ourselves, like I said, to seek after and to help someone else. Do you know a Christian is also driven by faith? A true, genuine Christian by the faith that they have in Jesus Christ. You know, without faith, an almost Christian can never have the hope to become completely a Christian. 
If you don't have that faith within you that, that you know who God is, and believe in all the things that he has done, you can never become completely. It is by grace through faith that we are truly saved and born again. It is only through God that we can have obtain this. The Bible, God's word, tells us without faith it is impossible to please him, and that's in Hebrews 11. This faith were not simply knowledge or belief in God, Jesus Christ, the Bible in heaven or hell, but Satan himself, do you realize, has faith in God? I want you to think about that this morning. It's serious. But Satan himself knows God's word. He believes in everything that the Bible says. He knows that it will happen. He knows it will come true, but one thing, he lived it. But also he knows that God's word is true because he knows the creator of the universe. Because he was created by him. And even though that he has his own agenda. And he tries to convince and to deceive each and every one of us that's here today. He knows God's word. And he believes in God's word. And every, every devil or every demon that is out there knows the word of God. And believes and knows the future. That the word of God is true. Why do we have such a hard time almost believing God's word? Or almost having the faith that it takes to serve God? Many people say, yeah, I have the faith and I believe that God can do these things. And I believe that God can heal. And I believe that God will take care of me through the fire. But yet they go worry about, well, Lord, I know you're going to take care of me. But then the next thing they're over there worrying. Or I believe that God's word is true. And then they, they continue to read and try to. Think of what someone else may believe in this or that. If we had the faith and truly believe in what God tells us, I think things would, we would be different. I really, really do. Faith and belief that Jesus Christ alone has made the way for us to become completely and not an almost Christian. God has taken care of everything for us. I think it's serious and important. That we are God's people the way that God has called us to be. That we're just not almost. That we read God's word. That we truly grasp a hold of what the Bible tells us that we need to do as God's people. That we fulfill the things that God has called us to do. Many people only do just enough to get by. Yeah, I'll do that for God. I'm just going to do just enough to. I'm not sure that I can really do it. But I'm going to do just enough to get by to say that I did it. It's a wonderful experience to know that when you have completed the task that God has given to you, that God has called you to become a Christian, that you fulfilled and gave it, did it your best and completely for Him. A faith that comes through the Father except through Jesus Christ. And now Christ has opened the doors to all who will walk through and regardless of their spiritual condition. Faith is what drives us. Knowing that God is going to open the doors and we will walk through those doors knowing that God will be with us. A faith that God will transform us into eternity into new people. We accept Jesus Christ as a person. It is by faith that we, we come to the realization that God's going to transform us and that we are going to become new creatures through Him. Destroying the power of sin in our lives. You know, sin has a lot of power on us. And Satan tries to paint that picture that he has control of us but when God enters in, He is dissolved. He is dissolved, so to speak, and He has no more power when God is living within us. I think so many times that people that become that that I would consider that only going through the actions of being a Christian, not fully grasping God's word or fully asking God to be with them. When was the last time you seriously prayed to God? And I'm not just talking about a prayer at mealtime. I'm not talking about a prayer, just a general prayer in public. I'm talking about a serious, genuine prayer to God. A time where you got down on your knees and seriously sought after God. A time that you set aside in your life and said, Lord, right now I want to get a hold of you. Lord, I want to find out what you're truly about. Lord, I want to experience you in a new way. When was the last time you truly did that? That is what, it's, is what it takes to seek after God. To know God. To know His will in your life. It takes more than two minutes. Yeah, it takes more than five minutes. I've heard people that prayed all day. 
seeking after God. Lord, what do you want in my life? Lord, I just want to become a part of you. Lord, I want to feel you within my life. I don't want to just be an old nosed Christian. I want to experience you in the fullest. I want to know what you want for me in my life. I want other people to get excited about my life because of what you've done in my life. I don't, we know we don't get excited about people with things that are wrong most happen. And the same it is with God's people. People do not get excited about people who are almost Christians. Who are almost did that or only half know God's word or this. They get excited about people who know the word of God and know God personally. That they have someone that they can go to. And they can see the joy and the love that God has instilled in them. Which comes by knowing Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Almost people don't experience those things. Almost doesn't quite get it with God. God wants you fully and completely to serve Him in everything that you do. And that's what's important. The thing is, it's, it's not until we get tired of becoming all, almost. It's kind of like when you just get tired of your life. Have you, everyone, everyone just get tired of life sometimes. You want a new change in your life. You want some joy, something different. You know, we all need a reason to live. We all need a... a a goal to reach, so to speak, in life. And it's when you obtain those goals that you begin to get life back into you. And oftentimes that's what God gives to us. He opens doors for us to serve Him. Gives us opportunities that we can obtain that. But first we must get to that point where we want Him in our lives. We have to get tired of the, re the way that we're walking with Him right now. Or, or going through the motions. We have to get tired of not wanting to experience God in His fullest. And the more and more that I read God's word, the more that I understand we have not reached that goal yet. We, are, we have not got there. When I read about the prophets and the different people in God, when they pray to God and things begin to happen, that's where I want to be. That's where I want to be. And I'm not saying I want to perform miracles. That's up to God. But what I'm saying, I want to be able to get a hold of God. And it's not until I reach that goal until I will be happy with and feel like that I'm not an almost person or an almost Christian. I don't think we'll ever fully obtain what God truly wants for us in our lives, but we can sure strive and leap some bounds to be where God wants us to be. The question is, are we happy where we're at right now? And how do you think that your life, compare your life right now? Are you almost walking with God? Or are you fully committed into walking with God and experiencing God's love? This is only accomplished by the grace of God. Not almost, but completely. God will transform us if we seriously and really want it, what God has to offer us. There's so much more out there than what we have right now. Let us pray. Our precious and heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. That, you. that you open doors and that there are many possibilities out there, Lord. Today, Lord, I pray that you would minister and to walk with us. But Lord, as we realize that we're, we're tired of being just people of all most, that we want to experience you in a new way. Lord, that we want to know your word. Lord, that we want to feel your presence. We want to experience you in a way that this year that we've never experienced you before. And we want people to get excited about you because of the things that you are doing in our lives and how you transform us. That people will want to come and to draw closer to you and come into fellowship and to be a part of this family. For the things that you are doing in our lives. How you transform us and your love that you instill in us. And that people will come to know that there is a sweet presence about us because of you living within us. And Lord, that you give us opportunities and goals to reach as you continue to open doors that will drive us and to strengthen us and to continue us pressing toward the goal which you have placed before us. Lord, as we walk with you, I pray that you would continue to manifest yourself in us and that we would continue to grow closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
surrender all number 